by the end of this video, you will know how to make a perfect true to size belt buckle and a belt strap in close 3D. This includes making a frame, a bar, and a belt prong. After that, exporting that belt buckle, then import it back into Clo. This allows you to resize and change the color to fit your design. Are you ready? Let's do it! So before we begin making the belt buckle and the belt strap, first I want to share with you a few terminologies for these belt buckle. For example, the belt frame, the belt bar, the belt prong, and the belt strap. And if I scroll down a little bit down here, as we can see, a belt buckle specs and a belt strap, okay? So I'm here in Clo. To create the belt frame, first I'm going to this polygon tool, click on one, then hover the mouse to the right and click one on this rectangle tool to select. After that, I'm going to click one on the page this will bring this create rectangle window and based on a measurement, the belt frame width is 6.5. By the way guys, this is in centimeter. If you guys not yet have centimeter, please go and see the links below this video. I have the video on how to change the unit in Clo. okay? So back to the frame side, the width is 6.5. Then the height, we want it to be five centimeter. After that, I'm going to come down here, click okay. And as you can see, we just create the bell frame. So after we create the bell frame, next, we will curve all these four corners. To do so, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. Place your two finger on this mouse pad and, and then just slide forward to zoom in. And after that, I'm going to come over here to this edit pattern tool, click on it. And then hover that mouse over to the right. And I'm going to select smooth curve tool. Click on it to select. Next, I'm going to come down here. You see right here when I hover the mouse over that point, it's kind of turned purple-ish, and I'm going to right-click on that point. After that, this round corner by length window pop up. I'm going to click on this link icon right here to link. Every time I click on that link icon, when I type the number in here, it will equally amount number appear on the lines too as well. So let me show you that. I'm going to type in 0.4, which is 0.4 centimeter. And as you can see, I only type in the top one, but also the bottom one has changed as well. And percentage curve, we want it 50%, which is perfect. Next, I'm going to come down here and click on OK to confirm. I'm going to repeat the step on these three more corners. Once again, while the smooth curve tool is active, I'm going to right click and then this round corner by length window pop up. And as you can see, we only have to click one on this link icon. And right now we don't have to click it on again. So I'm gonna just type in 0.4 and just double check to make sure it's line two also 0.4 and curl percent 50% and click OK. I'm going to repeat the step on this third corner. Once again, right click and then type in 0 
And as you can see, both lines are 0.4 each. I'm going to click on OK to confirm. And finally, the last corner, I'm going to once again right click to bring this round corner by length window and I'm going to type in 0.4. Then come down here, click on OK to confirm. Okay, so after we change all these corner to round, I'm going to offset internal line, okay? And we want to convert that to whole. To do so, I'm going to come over here to this transform pattern tool, click on it. And I'm going to come back and click one on that object. After that, I'm going to right click. And I'm going to select, come over here, offset as internal line. And so guy refer to the specs sheet. Once again, the links below. So we're supposed to type in 0.7 for the distance, okay? So 0.7 for the distance. And number of offset one. And I'm going to come down here and click on OK. Okay. So by default, this internal shape is selected. If somehow your is not selected, I want to show you how. You just click one off right here and your internal shape not selected, right? So I'm going to the transform pattern tool, click on it to select, then come down here and just click on this right here. Okay? Just hover the mouse over this internal shape, click on it. Next, I'm going to right click and then I'm going to come down here, convert to whole and click on it. Okay. As you can see, we just convert this internal shape to a whole. Okay. Next, I'm going to click one on the page to release this selection. So, Next, we are going to create the bar for the belt buckle, okay? To create the bar, refer to the belt buckle specs. To do so, I'm going to come over here to this rectangle tool, click on one to select. Then I'm going to click one on the page to bring this create rectangle window. And I'm going to, once again, guy refer to the belt buckle spec. We supposed to create the width is 0.6 centimeter. Next, I'm going to press down the tab key and we want the height to be 3.6. Next, I'm going to come down here, click on OK to confirm. So if you guys wonder how I get the height of 3.6, let me show you. I just come over here to this edit pattern tool, click on it. Then I just click on this link right here. You see that's the height that we want, 3.6. So the height right here, 3.6 is exactly the height from this bell frame right here, okay? After that, we are going to align that bell bar to the bell frame. To do so, I'm going to come over here to the transform pattern tool, click on one to select. Then I'm going to marquee select both of these objects. Okay. Then I'm going to right click and I'm going to select align and align to center. We have to align the toys guy. So the next one I'm going to once again, right click and then align it to the middle. Okay, as you can see, a bell bar now is aligned to the bell frame. So after we align both objects together, I'm going to come over here to this 3D window and click on this reset 2D arrangement because we want the both of the objects align together. 
And let me zoom in so I can show you. So as you can see, both the objects align together. And I'm going to press down number two to get to the much closer and more accurate. So as you can see right here, both objects are aligned together. After that, I'm going to click one on the pick to release from that selection. Next, we are going to create the belt prong for a belt buckle, okay? So after we create the belt bar as well as the belt frame, next, we are going to create the belt prong, okay? To create the belt prong, I'm going to come over here to this rectangle tool, click on one to select, then come back over here to the page, click on it to bring this create rectangle window and refer to the specs. We going to type in right here, the width 3.5 and I'm going to press down the tab key and we want the height to be 0.6 centimeter. After that, I'm going to click on OK to confirm. Next, we're going to curve to in point of the belt prong, okay? So let me zoom in just a little bit. So to curve these points, I'm going to come over here. Once again, guys, click on this edit pattern tool, and then come over here to this smooth curve tool, click on it. Now I'm going to just right click, you see, if you hover the mouse over that point right there, you see this, you see this purple highlight appear, right click on it. This will bring this round corner by length window. And you see right here by default, the links icon already checked. So we don't have to worry about that. If not, be sure you click on it. You see right here, this is unlinked. We want it to link. So we want to change that to point one CM. Then you see both the line one and line two or equal amount, which is 0.1. That's what we want. And the curvature is 50%. And I'm going to click on OK to confirm. Next, I'm going to, once again, while that smooth tool is active, I'm going to just hover the mouse over this point, then right click to bring this round corner by length window and I'm going to type in 0.1. So just a double check anyway, make sure both lines are equal amount because that's what we want. And curvature is 50% and I'm going to click on OK. Okay, so as you can see, we just create the belt prong. Next, I'm going to bring it down over here a little bit, okay? To do so, I'm going to come over here to the transform pattern tool, click on it, and I'm going to click on that belt prong and then bring it down here just a little bit. Okay, so we just created the bell bar, the bell frame, and the bell prong. Next, I'm going to marquee select all the objects, okay? And come to the property editor. I'm going to change the particle distance to one. See right here, come down over here to simulation property. I'm going to highlight this particle distance and then type in one. And I'm going to press on enter to confirm. And this warning window pop up to one us that a particle distance is lower than five, it will slow down our computer. However, we don't have to worry about that because we're dealing with this small portion of fabric. We're going to click yes. Okay, next, we are going to change. You come down here to, once again, under simulation property, we are going to change add thickness rendering to three. And then I'm going to press down return or enter on the keyboard to confirm. Okay, so by default, my close window in this 3D already show the thickness, but somehow if you're not, see, let's see, uh, you see right there, you instead of texture surface, 
you want it to be thick textured surface okay just click on it to show the thickness of the objects that we are making however i'm going to once again click on this reset 2d arrangement so i want these objects next to each other okay and let me press down command or control and right click and then just drag it to the right to rotate this object it looked pretty good guys so right here a bell frame and a bell bar and over here is a bell prong okay so it looks pretty good but a couple of things that we can improve on okay so right now it looks kind of kind of dull we want it make just like in the picture that I show you, it's like a metal bell buckle, okay? First of all, let me just click one on the page to release. After that, I'm going to come over here and click on this fabric. You see this under object browser? I'm going to click on the fabric. And I'm going to come down here. You see right here under material? Instead of fabric mat, I'm going to change it to metal render only. Click on it, okay? It is much better. However, it's still not the metal looks that we want. So there is something else that we can do. So I'm going to come over here. You see right here, render quality. Click on that, but right there. And as you can see, this turn, just like the metal that I show you in the picture, right? Looks pretty amazing. So after that, I'm going to show you how to export these objects so we can use it for our projects, okay? As you can see, we just created the bell frame, the bell bar, and the bell prong. We are going to export these objects separately to export these objects first i'm going to come over here to the transform pattern tool click on it to select then i'm going to come down here and my key select both of these objects so i'm going to export the bar and the bell frame together then i'm going to come over here to file click on it and hover the mouse down here to export then hover the mouse to the right and i'm going to select obj selected okay next i'm going to name the file buckle after that i'm going to let's just create a folder and i'm going to name buckle and strap after that i'm going to click on create Next, I'm going to click on save. This will bring this export OBJ window. So we want to select single objects, that's perfect. We want to select stick, that's also perfect. And come down here, save with absolute texture image file path. After that, I'm going to select OK. Next, I'm going to export this bell prong once again while this transform pattern tool is active i'm going to make it select that prong and go to file then hover the mouse down here to export and hover the mouse to the right and select this obj selected and i'm going to name that prong okay and yes that's the folder we want and Come over here, click on save to confirm. Okay, once again, this export OBJ window pop up. Be sure you check these single objects, thick right here, then save with absolute texture image path, then click OK to confirm. Okay, so I'm going to save this file as well, okay? And I'm going to save it as project. So I'm going to come over here to file, 
and then save as and then select project and I'm going to name it Bill Burkle and Prong. And I'm going to navigate to the folder that I wanted to say, which is right here, buckle and strap. And I'm going to click on save to confirm. So next I'm going to open a new file because we are going to create the bell strap. So to open a new file, come over here to file and then new. Next, I'm going to create the fabric. To create the fabric, I'm going to refer to the specs right here. Let me uh, show you. I have this how to make true to size belt buckle and strap link below under the video. So if I scroll down here to these belt specs and the strap dimension is 106 by 3 centimeter. So now I'm going to come back to Chloe right here. And we need to create the fabric for the belt strap. To do so, I'm going to come over here to this rectangle tool, click on it, then hover the mouse to the right, and then click on the rectangle tool to select. After that, I'm going to click one on the page to bring the create rectangle window, and I'm going to tap in the width of 106. Next, let me move that window out of the way a little bit so we can see the preview. After that, I'm going to press down the tab key on my keyboard and type in the height of 3. After that, I'm going to click on OK to confirm. As you can see, we just created this bell strap for the bell. So next we want to rotate this bell strap. To do that, I'm going to come over here to the transform pattern tool, click on it. Then I'm going to hover the mouse over to this area on the center and you see these two arrows like a circle pop up. I'm going to just left click and then press down shift on my keyboard and then drag it to the right to rotate this bell strap, okay? After that, I'm going to come over here to this 3D window and click on Reset to the Arrangement. Okay. Next, I'm going to pan this 3D workspace to the right by pressing down Option or Alt, left click, and then click and drag it to the right. After that, I'm going to come over here to this 2D window. Okay. I want to rotate this back. To do so, once again, hover your mouse over that. You see that center line right there and the two circle appear. I'm going to press down shift one more time and then left click. And then I'm going to drag back to lay it flat. Instead of vertical, I want it to be horizontal. Okay. After that, I'm going to just click on it and then drag it down just a little bit. Next. I'm going to create the end tip of the bell. So I'm going to just press down Option Alt, left click to pan it to the right, and I'm going to zoom in by place down two of my fingers on the mouse pad and then slide forward to zoom in. And I'm going to just come over here to this Edit Pattern tool, click on it, then come back over here and click one on this edge of the fabric, and then right click. Next, I'm going to select Offset as Internal Line. So refer to the belt spec guide, we need two internal lines for this end tip. The first one, the distance need to be two centimeter. Then I'm going to click on OK to confirm. So by default, that internal line is selected. I'm going to just right click and then I want to come over here to this extend slash trim at point. Hover the mouse to the right and then select two pattern outline. It looks like nothing really happened guys, but however, we just create one point on each of these lines. Next, I'm going to create the second internal line. So while this 
Edit Pattern Tool is active, I'm going to just click one on the edge of the fabric right there. Then right click and I'm going to select Offset as internal line once again. And this time, instead of 2 centimeter, I'm going to type in 11 centimeter. Then, number of offsets is 1, perfect, and I'm going to click on OK. Once again, guys, by default, the internal line is selected. I'm going to right click, and this time I'm going to convert it to baseline. Okay? So we will use this line as a guide to place the hole when we punch a hole on this belt strap, okay? After that, I'm going to create a point right here on this center edge of this end tip, okay? To do that, I'm going to come over here to this Edit Pattern Tool, click on it. Then hover the mouse to the right and then select Add Point Slash Flat Line. Next, I'm going to come down here and hover the mouse over that edge line once again and then right click. Okay, so if this happened guys, the mistake happened when I right click, my hand will just click it off rather than on the line. So what you're gonna do, just press escape to get out of it and try it again. So once again, hover the mouse onto the edge of the line and you see that purple point appear. Right click, okay, to bring the split line window. And by default, it is split into two lines. We don't want that. We want to come down here to unit form split. Click on it. And as you can see right here in the preview, we have this point right on the center, which is exactly what we want. After that, I'm going to come over here, click on OK. All right. Next, we are going to remove both of these points right here on each side of this yellow highlighted point, okay? To do that, I'm going to come over here to that second icon, the tool right there, click on it, and then hover the mouse to the right, and then select Edit Pattern Tool. This time, I'm going to just my key select this point right here. Then I'm going to press down Shift on my keyboard, and my key select this point as well. Then I'm releasing the shift on my keyboard and I'm going to press down the lead or backspace on the keyboard to delete both of these points. As you can see, we just create this perfect end tip for the belt strap. Next, we are going to create five holes for the belt strap. Once again, guys, refer to the specs. I have the link below. So based on the data, we're supposed to create five holes right here, okay, on the belt strap. And the dimension of the hole is one centimeter, okay? So to do that, I'm going to come over here to this internal line tool, click on it, then hover the mouse to the right, and then select internal ellipse, okay? Then I'm going to come over here. Let me zoom in a little more. Once again, place your two fingers onto the mouse pad and slide forward to zoom in, okay? All right, so as you can see, when I hover the mouse over that baseline right there, it the guy appears. It shows that we are right on the center on that, that line, and that's what we want. So I'm going to click one on that line, okay? Just left click one to bring this create ellipse window. Let me move it to the left. Okay, by default, diameter is checked. And we want to change the width of one centimeter. And as you can see, when I insert the value for the width, the height also change. This because this link icon is check. If you only want to change just the width and not the height, you just uncheck that. You see how you click one, it kind of link and click another time, it doesn't link. So I will show you the next one when we want to have these values differences, okay? For now, I'm going to just check on that link right there. And I'm going to come down here to replicate 
and the interval I want to change it to three centimeter and number of shape I want to change that to five and as you can see the preview over here we just create the perfect circle that have perfect length from one to the next after that I'm going to click on OK all right let me zoom back out a little bit Place your two fingers onto the mouse pad and slide backward to zoom out, okay? Right there. And I'm going to pan it to the left, press down option all, left click. Next, I'm going to cut and sew these circle shape to create the holes onto the belt strap, okay? So I'm going to come over here to the transform pattern tool, click on it. Then I'm going to just my key select all these circle shapes, then right click and come down here to cut and sew click on it so we just cut and sew this circle shape into a hole onto the belt strap after that i'm going to move the circle shape up here okay to do that while the transform pattern tool is active i'm going to click one on the first circle then press down shift and then continue clicking all that circle right there then i'm going to release the shift on the keyboard and then left click and drag to above it okay so while the circle are selected i'm going to right click and i want to offset as internal line okay so right here offset as internal line click on it and this time i'm going to type in for the distance of 0.2 okay number of offsets is one perfect and once again guys as you can see in this preview we see the circle create the internal lines in it that's what we want and i'm going to click on ok so by default these circle shape into that circle as selected i'm going to right click okay and i'm going to come over here to cut and sew one more time okay so as you can see we just create this perfect eyelid shape for a bell strap okay so next i'm going to click one on the page to get out the selection after that i'm going to come over here to this object browser and i'm going to name this fabric number one to strap okay and press return enter on the keyboard to confirm after that i'm going to come over here to add click on it i want to create one more fabric so once again click on the add button to add another fabric and i'm going to name this fabric eyelets press return and enter on the keyboard to confirm and i'm going to come over here on this fabric once again and then change the name to circle okay i'm going to press return or enter on the keyboard to confirm after that i'm going to just my key select that circle right there then press down shift on the keyboard and then select the next circle, the next circle, the next circle. And then I'm going to come over here to the circle fabric and click on the twirling arrow right there. Because we want to apply that circle fabric on to all the circle, okay? So let me click on that fabric. So as you can see, when I click on that circle fabric, all these circle highlighted in yellow. That means all these circle right here has this circle fabric in it, okay? Next, I'm going to do the same with the eyelet. I'm going to come over here and my key select just the eyelet this time and press down shift on my keyboard and then my key select all the eyelets okay okay then i'm going to come over here to this eyelet fabric and to the right there at the twirling arrow click on it okay so once again i'm going to click on that fabric 
And as you can see, all these eyelids are highlighted in yellow. So next, I'm going to apply the taping onto this hole as well as the eyelid. To do that, I'm going to just my key select this right layer, that eyelid, press down shift on my keyboard, and then continue selecting that eyelid. Then I'm going to come over here to this property editor and scroll down here to under selected line and come to the seam taping. I'm going to check that to turn it on, okay? Next, I'm going to do the same right here. Click on the first hole and then press down shift on the keyboard, continue clicking. Then I'm going to come down here and apply seam taping to the holes. So after that, I'm going to continue working on to the head of the bell strap. So according to the bell specs, we want to create three internal lines here onto the head. So to do that, I'm going to come over here to this edit pattern tool, click one to select. Then I'm going to click one right here on this edge of the fabric, then right click. And I'm going to come down here to offset as internal line, click on it. Okay, so this one, we want to change the distance to 2.3, okay? After that, the number of offsets, we want it to be two. And I'm going to click on OK. Okay, so we are going to create another internal line. While this edit pattern tool is active, I'm going to just click right here on the edge of fabric again, right click, and then select offset as internal line. Then this time, instead of 2.3, I'm going to type in 2.3. 0.6. Then number of offsets instead of two, I'm going to change it to one. Okay. Then I'm going to click on OK to confirm. Once again, guys, as you can see by default, the internal line is selected. So I'm going to right click, and then I want to change that to the baseline right here. Select convert to baseline. Okay. All right. So next, I'm going to create a hole right here so we can place the bell prong on it later when we bring in the bell prong. So to create the hole, I'm going to come over here to this internal, see right there, that internal ellipse. Just click on it, then hover the mouse to the right, and then select internal ellipse. Then, Hover the mouse over here on this baseline, okay? Not on this internal line. We want to hover the mouse over here on this baseline. And then we want to click one to bring this create ellipse window. And this is important, guys, okay? First, we are going to check this right here. Click on it to unlink the width from the height because we want the width to be point. 35 okay and then i'm going to press down the tab key on my keyboard and i want to change the height to be 1.08 okay so as you can see this is the preview right here it's kind of create this oval shape and i'm going to come down here to okay and i'm going to click on it so next while this internal shape is selected, I'm going to come over here to this edit pattern tool, click on it, and come back over here to that shape and hover the mouse over it and then right click. And I'm going to select cut and sew. All right, so as you can see, we just cut and sew the oval shape. Next, I want to move this oval shape over over here, okay? To do that, I'm going to come over here to this transform pattern tool, click on it. And I'm going to click on that right there, that oval shape, and then drag it over just a little bit, okay? So while that oval shape is selected, I'm going to come over here to this object browser. And you see right to that circle fabric, 
the tooling arrow, I want to click on that because I want to apply the fabric onto the oval shape, okay? So we want all the circle going to that circle fabric. So after that, I'm going to come over here and click on this hole right there and come to the property editor and come down to seam taping. I'm going to click on that to turn it on, okay? Next, we want to sew this in tip right here to the second internal line. To do that, I'm going to come over here. You see the second sew machine icon, click on it. Then hover the mouse to the right and select segment sewing tool. After that, I'm going to come back here and just hover the mouse over to that edge. Now I'm going to click on it to place the first sewing. Then I'm going to hover the mouse over here. I'm going to click on this line to sew them together. So after we sewn this end tip of the bell to the second internal line, next we are going to change this, you see right here, this internal line. We want to change the folding angle to 69. To do that, once again, guys, right here, all these specs and guidelines on how to create this bell strap and bell buckle i'm going to just close that for a second and right here i'm going to come over here to this edit pattern tool click on it then i'm going to come back here and click on that internal line right there then i'm going to come over here to property editor and come down to the full angle i want to change that to 69 Okay, then press return into on your keyboard to confirm. After that, I'm going to just zoom back out a little bit. Just press your two finger onto the mouse pad and slide backward to zoom out. For those who work on the desktop, you can just scroll your mouse wheel backward to zoom out and then scroll your mouse wheel forward to zoom in. Okay, and I'm going to pan it over just a little bit. Press down option on all, left click to pan it. All right, so we just create these five holes onto the bell strap as well as these eyelets, okay? Next, I'm going to apply the top stitches on to this bell strap. After that, I'm going to apply the top stitch onto this strap. To do that, I'm going to come over here to material and then top stitch and I'm going to select segment top stitch okay after that I'm going to just come down here hover the mouse over you see this highlight blue appear click on it then I'm going to click over here as well on this end of the fabric then over here then over here, over here. So as you can see, now we just apply the top stick on to this edge. After that, I'm going to come over here to this default top stitch and I'm going to click on it. And I want to name it single. Okay. After that, I'm going to come over here to this add button, click one to add another top stitch and this time i'm going to change the name to double after that i'm going to come over here and zoom in a little bit to this end tip i'm going to apply that top stitch on to this right here this end tip line this internal line then i'm going to once again guy come back and click on that double top stitch and then I can come down here and slide it down, slide it down. I want to change the faces to, instead of front, I wanted to change it to bows. And number of lines, instead of one, I want to change it to two. Okay. And as you can see, we just have double stitches right here and single stitches on this edge of this bell strap. Okay. So let me uh, come back and click on this right here, this single top stitch and come down here. Once again, guys, change this face to both rather than front because we want the bell 
stitches to appear both back and front. Okay, next I'm going to just click one on the pig to release from this selection. And I'm going to zoom out just a little bit, okay? And we want to apply double top stitches onto right here, this line right here. To do that, I'm going to just click on this double top stitches and I'm going to come over here and click on the second internal line to apply that top stitch. And now you can see these are double rather than single. So next, we are going to make this belt strap a little bit thicker and look more realistic. To do that, I'm going to come over here to the transform pattern tool, click on it, and then click on that belt strap and come to this property editor and I'm going to change the particle distance to 5. Okay, then I'm going to press return into on the keyboard to confirm. After that, I'm going to change this add thickness rendering to 1. Okay, then press return into on the keyboard to confirm. So next, I'm going to come over here to that strap fabric, click on it. Okay, then I want to change the fabric type from matte to leather. And right there. Then I want to change the color to blue. Let me just fly over kind of a little bit of slight blue and I'm going to click OK to confirm. Let me zoom in in this 3D window so we can see the effects a little better, okay? Pan it up. All right. Okay. So next, after we just change the thickness of the belt to one, I'm going to come over here to this eyelet and let me zoom in just a little bit. And I want to change the eyelet fabric to a metal. So we want this eyelet to look like a metal. To do so, I'm going to come over here to this eyelet fabric, click on it. Then fabric type. Under property editor, change it from fabric matte to metal render only. I also want to change the color to get a somewhat like a metal look. Maybe kind of grayish. And then I'm going to click on OK to confirm. And let me zoom in in this, see right here, this 3D window. Okay. So we want to select thick texture surface all right so let me zoom in a little more you see right here this is a eyelid after that i'm going to my key selects all these circle shape and eyelids and i'm going to come over here to this property editor and i want to change the particle distance to one okay just click on this bar slide down come to particle distance and then highlight it and then type in one press on return into on your keyboard to confirm then this warning window pop up in turning the particle distance lower than five will slow down for simulation would you like to proceed yes okay so as you can see a uh, eyelid looks much better already after that i'm going to come over here to this fabric and I'm going to click on the circle fabric, okay? And I'm going to come down here to this property editor and I want to change the opacity to zero, okay? So we want opacity for that circle to be zero. Just slide it to zero, perfect. So now we can see through this hole, all right? Let me zoom out a little bit in this 3D window. Now a belt strap look pretty awesome, guy. However, there is one more thing that I show you in the picture and I want to accomplish that, okay? Let me show you. See right here, this stripe looking thing right there, okay? I will show you how to get that effect. It's super cool, guys. All right, let me go back to Clo, okay? And when you're here in Clo, you just come over here to this strap right here and come to this property editor and write down here texture and you see this texture icon this first icon right here click on it okay 
and we want to select the single stitch texture and then click open. And as you can see, we just apply this texture onto a belt strap. However, it kind of too big. You see the texture itself, a little too big. So we want to decrease the size of this texture. I'm going to come over here to this texture tool, click on it. And then I'm going to click one on that that strap right there and come over here to the gizmo you see on the center one click and then drag to the right to expand click and then drag to the left to kind of contract these textures to a smaller size which is more appropriate for a bell size okay and you can also you see hover the mouse over this two-headed arrow and you can just shift it to however you like. However, I kind of like the diagonal look. That is perfect for me. Then after that, I'm going to click one on the slash move tool to get out that texture. And once again, guys, click one on the page to deselect. Okay. Next, I'm going to import that bell buckle and the bell prong, okay? So to do that, I'm going to come over here to file and then come over here to import and then select OBJ, okay? And I'm going to navigate to my bell buckle that I created earlier, right here, buckle OBJ, and I'm going to click on it and then click on open and this import obj window pop up so under basic we want the load type to be edit okay we want object type to be avatar scale mm perfect 100 percent awesome and unit change it to cm after that click on ok Okay, this is cool, guy. Okay? This is a bell buckle that we created earlier, right? Let me uh, click on it. Somehow, the click on it doesn't want to appear. You see the gizmo right here? That's what I'm looking for. I want to click on it and then have this gizmo right there appear so I can move that object anywhere I want. Let me bring it up here. And I'm going to just pan it down a little bit. Just press down option all on the keyboard. And then come over here. So guys, by default, okay, the side that I created should be perfect for the bell buckle. However, if you're not happy with that bell buckle side, you can click on it and then you can change the side. See right here? Click on the side changes icon and you can just Change it bigger, wider, however you like. I'm going to press Command Z to undo it. You can even make it thicker if you want. Just rotate this to the right, and then you can just click and drag to make it thicker. However, I don't want to make it thicker, so I'm going to Command or Control plus letter Z to undo, and I'm going to rotate this workspace by pressing down command or control and then right click and then drag it to the left to rotate, okay? And next I'm going to press down number two on my keyboard because I want to reset this workspace to default, which is in the front. After that, I'm going to just pan it over a little more, okay? Just press down option all on the keyboard and zoom in. So don't be shy to zoom in guys because we want it as close as possible so we can see detail about it, okay? Next, I'm going to click on that bell buckle right there and I'm going to click one on the scale icon to get back to this gizmo so we can click on that gizmo and then move a buckle, okay? So I want to rotate the bell buckle up and down vertical rather than horizontal. I'm going to left click on this right here and then press down shift to rotate because I want it to be 
straight up and down okay next I'm going to just click on that and then drag it over to these bell strap okay that is pretty awesome guy let me just pan it down a little bit press it on option all on the keyboard and then pan it down and I'm going to rotate because I want to see the whole buckle if it's too close or too far from the bell strap to do that press down command or control right click and then drag it to the right to rotate look as you can see our bell buckle is placed too far into the bell strap so what I'm going to do is I'm going to once again click on that bell buckle okay then I'm going to rotate it to the right rotate the whole workspace then I'm going to click on this blue square right there and then drag it forward just a little bit, okay? And rotate it over. I think that's about right. Next, I'm going to rotate back right here, okay? And I'm going to click on this yellow, yellow square and then move it to up forward or downward, however I like. Okay, so here, I do not see any internal line in this bell strap. However, I can come over here to this right here, this t-shirt icon, and I'm going to click on the internal line show to display this internal line right there. Let me click one on the page to deselect the bell buckle and I can show you. So right here, this internal line, I just select display option to show the internal line and we need that internal line to be visible okay i will show you in a bit so after that i'm going to once again click on that bell buckle okay so here's some issue happen sometimes when we click on that bell buckle it somehow the gizmo doesn't appear so what you're gonna do just click one on a page and then click one on that bell buckle again and this time the gizmo appear and i'm going to just click and then move that bell buckle up and down how we like and then i'm going to place just right below that oval shape hole okay next i'm going to come over here to this you see right below this move slash tool i'm going to click on this tool right here it's called select mess box and then hover the mouse to the right and then click on that mess box tool to select. Next, I'm going to just kind of click right there, right above the buckle and then drag to the right and then drag it down to create this right here to highlight this area so we can pull the fabric over off the buckle, okay? So we can click and drag right here. So after we highlight that area, I'm going to click on that area and this gizmo up here. And I'm going to pull that fabric over the bells bar, okay? To do that, I'm going to rotate the workspace to the left a little bit, okay? Then I'm going to click on this blue area and then drag forward. As you can see, I just pull the fabric forward, okay? Then I'm going to rotate this bell back to the right. See if I rotate everything? Looks like I'm doing pretty good, okay? Next, I'm going to just click one on the page to release. After that, I'm going to see certain area right here. We need to pull a little more. This not come through. We want it just a little bit more. Once again, just click and then highlight that area then click on it and rotate it to the right and then click on that blue square right then pull it over a little more because we want that fabric over this belt bar okay and then click one on a page to release and you can see almost there i'm going to just do it a little more on that fabric so i'm going to just click drag like you draw a square guy and i'm going to click on that fabric one more time to bring this gizmo and rotate it so i can see the blue square and then click on it and then drag forward okay 
it should be good this time okay so now you can see this fabric right here is over the bell bar after that i'm going to once again guy after that i'm going to come over here to this full arrangement tool click on it then i'm going to hover you see right here when i hover my mouse over the internal line this blue highlight appear and i'm going to click on it and now you see this gizmo i'm going to click on this green gizmo and drag it to the left to fold it backward okay and let me just left click and then rotate this a little bit you want to see yeah that's okay that will be fine okay so i'm going to click one on the page to release all right so first of all let me explain a little bit with the bell buckle so when we import this bell buckle into the workspace this bell buckle is free i will show you in a minute when i hit the space bar to simulate everything changes except the bell buckle does not move okay so let me show you that i'm going to press down the space bar to simulate okay all right so you press on the space bar and then stop press and stop a couple of times you don't want to wait to until it's all simulated because we want to adjust this bell strap and let me uh kind of rotate the workspace a little bit and as you can see we kind of have a lot of space between the buckle and the bell strap this is because the bell buckle skin set is a little too high so i'm going to show you how to reduce that so to change the skin offset for this bell buckle i'm going to come over here to this move slash tool click on it then i'm going to click on that buckle then come to the property editor and i'm going to scroll down over here to the skin offset instead of three i'm going to change it to one then press return enter on the keyboard to confirm Next, I'm going to click one on the page to release the selection and I'm going to rotate a little bit to the right here so we can see these whole changes. Okay, I'm going to press the space bar to simulate. As you can see, the skin also change from drastically circle to kind of almost touch this bell bar. Okay, all right. So something we can do about this okay it's a little bit crooked here so what i can do i'm going to come over here to this right here just click one to select that strap and i'm going to right click and strengthen it okay then i'm going to press down the space bar to simulate once again and as you can see it looks much better already okay next i'm going to just click one on the pick to release all right awesome guys let me press on number two on the keyboard to reset my view to front view and i'm going to pan it up a little bit and look at a bell look pretty awesome guys okay so there is some tuning that we need to do for the bell strap as well as for the bell buckle and we also need to place right here let me zoom in we also need to place the belt prong right here on to this belt buckle all right so first of all i'm going to change this property of the belt buckle to metal okay so to do that i'm going to just click on right here on that belt buckle and i'm going to come over here and I want to change the bell buckle type right here. Material type from matte to metal. Right there. So metal render only. So as you can see here. It looks much better already. So from plastic looking thing to a metal look. Another thing I want to point out here. So this is the render quality. It's really a shoot chain. So if I click on that. You see how this look kind of dull if i come over here and select this render quality in the 3d top corner right here 
gave this huge effect. It looked just like really metal metal, okay? Which is, that's what we want. And so far, a bell buckle looks really awesome onto this belt strap. Next, we are going to import the belt prong. To do so, I'm going to file, click on it, then come to import, and then go to OBJ. All right, so we are going to import the belt prong. We created the belt prong earlier, and now I'm going to click on it, and then I'm going to come over here to open. Okay, we will do a little bit different here, okay? So under basic, load type is the same. You want to add to the workspace, okay? Object type. So instead of avatar, we want it to be trim, okay? The scale the same, the percentage 100, and the unit, of course, go to CM. Then I'm going to click on OK. All right, so there is something a little bit different when we import it as avatar compared to trim, okay? So when we imported an object uh, trim, we have this glue bottle, which allows us to glue this prong onto this bell strap as well as bell buckle, okay? So I'm going to show you that. So first I'm going to click on that glue bottle okay then i'm going to hover my mouse over that area that i want to place the bell prong which is right there i'm going to just click on it now i'm going to just pan it down a little bit to see the result press down option on all left click to pan down and i'm going to zoom in just place your two fingers onto the mouse pad and slide it forward to zoom in it's really cool and next, I'm going to just pan down a little more, zoom in a little bit more. Okay, so what happened, we're going to adjust this belt prong to fit to a belt buckle, okay? To do that, I'm going to click on that belt prong once again to bring this gizmo up. And I'm going to left click and then press down shift on my keyboard and then drag it upward, okay? Then I'm going to click on that yellow square and just bring it up just a little bit then i'm going to rotate it to the right press down command or control right click to rotate see you can see it's not bad we almost almost get it there however let me zoom in a little bit a belt prong a little bit too thick so i want to change the size to make it thinner okay and also not only too thick, but it's also too wide. So I'm going to change the thickness and the width to a little bit smaller. All right. First of all, I'm going to rotate back to the right. And I'm going to click on this. You see right here, this icon. That is the side changing icon. So click on it. And then I can just click on the blue arrow. So just squeeze it down to just change the side a little bit thinner. See right there. Then I'm going to rotate it back. And I want to change, see the width right here of this uh, bell buckle a little bit too wide. I'm going to just click on that green arrow and then click it and drag it to the right. Okay. Then it's also too tall. I'm going to just once again click on that red arrow and then drag it down a little to make it a little shorter all right next i want to move that prong up a little bit to do that i'm going to come over here to the you see this side changing icon click on it and this gets will appear once again so i'm going to click on that yellow square and then just drag it up a little bit okay so as you can see it looks much better already so again, I'm going to click on this square and then drag it forward to just fit right into the hole. And I'm going to just click on that yellow square to just drag it down just a little bit. Okay. And drag it just where it looks. Okay. 
So next, I'm going to click one on the page to deselect. Okay. After that, I'm going to just press down Command or Control on the keyboard and right click and rotate to see if we can do anything to improve on it. So far, it looks pretty good, guy. Next, I'm going to click one on that bell prong once again. And I'm going to come over here to this property editor. And I want to change the color to... Let me use this eye picker. And then I'm going to just click one on this buckle. Then I'm going to press down escape on the keyboard. Then I'm going to click on OK to confirm. After that, a bell prong doesn't look even close to be metal. There's something we can do about that. So once again, come over here to this property editor and I'm going to change, see right here, the type from fabric match to metal. And there it is. As you can see, we just create this perfect bell prong for the bell buckle and for the bell strap. So after that, I'm going to come over here to this t-shirt icon and I want to turn that, that internal line off, okay? All right, next, I'm going to press down the space bar to simulate. Okay, so there's something we can improve on, okay? So we want to adjust this to fit this hole right here. So let me just zoom in a little more, left click to pan. So I'm going to come over here, click on the simulation icon to stop the simulation. And I'm going to click on the select slash move tool. And I'm going to click on the bell prong. And I'm going to click on the circle, blue circle, rotate it to the right, to the left. And I'm going to rotate the workspace a little bit so I can see right here. I want to drag this out just a little bit. And I want to make this width of the bell prong a little bit smaller, okay? Once again, come to the side changes icon, click on it. Then I'm going to click on that green stick out and then drag it to the right to make it a little bit not as wide, okay? Next, I'm going to once again click on that icon to get back to this gizmo. And I want to move it out. I'm going to press down on the space bar one more time to simulate. So far it looks pretty good. So let me unstrengthen this bell strap so we get to see the result better. Again, just click on that bell strap and select unstrengthen. Okay. All right. So see if something we can do to improve on it. So a little bit crooked. I'm going to just click on that bell prong one more time. Then just adjust it a little bit over here. So we want it to be like just right, okay? That looks perfect actually. All right, let me press down once again, this space bar to simulate. Then I'm going to just zoom out a little bit. I'm going to press down number two on the keyboard to get to this front view and pan it over this is awesome guy so okay let me zoom in closer look to these eyelids for the bell right there i want to double check a couple of things right here so let me take a look at this uh, circle 
I want to make sure this opacity of the circle to be zero, okay? So that's what we want is perfect. And we want the eyelet to be metal render only. That's perfect. That's what we want. Okay. So let me turn off this bottom floor. Now, let me go to rendering and I'm going to select render and click right here to see the quality of a rendering. Okay. All right. We just create this perfect bell strap and the eyelets for the bell. And I'm going to just zoom out. So this is the back, looks pretty awesome. And then come back to the right. Nice, perfect. All right, so let me close this rendering window. Finally, we're going to save this project, okay? To save the project, I'm going to come over here to file and then Select save as project and I'm going to name this bell with buckle. Then I'm going to navigate to where I want to save it, which is movie and come down here to belt buckle and strap. And I'm going to click save. And next I'm going to click save one more time to save that belt buckle and the belt strap. There you have it, we just created these perfect bell buckles and the bell strap for your project. Hi, I'm Rose Willy from Encoder Fashion. There is more information under this video. Bye!